The Amazon rainforest in South America is the largest tropical forest in the world. Along with being home to a huge variety of plants and wildlife, rainforests also play an important role in storing carbon. The main disturbance of Amazonian forests is the selective logging of a few merchantable tree species that results in the loss of above-ground carbon stocks, which can be compensated via enhanced growth of survivors and recruited trees. However, it is not clear how differences in the forest characteristics in the local environment and in the disturbance intensity caused by the logging affect the ability of the forest ecosystem to recover the lost carbon. In this paper, we used mathematical modeling to analyze long-term inventory data from 133 different forest plots across the Amazonia. We linked regional differences in climate, soil properties, and initial biomass with survivors and recruits' carbon fluxes to provide Amazon-wide predictions of post-logging carbon recovery potential. The models show that the forest's ability to recover carbon after selective logging greatly differs between Amazonian regions. Indeed, the net above-ground carbon stocks over 10 years is higher in the Guiana Shield and in the Western Amazon than in the Southern Amazon. These variations are explained with the above-ground carbon stocks of each site before disturbance, the regional climactic conditions, and soil bulk density. Forests of the Guiana Shield are generally dense and grow on nutrient-poor soils where wood productivity is constrained by competition for key nutrients. Short pulses of nutrients released from readily decomposed stems, twigs, and leaves of trees damaged and killed by logging explain the substantial but limited duration increase in the growth of surviving trees. In the southern Amazon, on the other hand, high seasonal water stress is the main constraint on carbon recovery. Stress-tolerant trees are generally poor competitors, and this may explain the slower carbon accumulation in survivors in this region. Furthermore, our findings highlight the key role the trees that survive selective logging play in the forest regrowth. High disturbance intensities reduce survivors' above-ground carbon stocks, and survivors' above-ground carbon stocks' growth is consequently lower. As climate change continues, we can also expect to see increases in droughts and fires that will further disturb the Amazonian forests. Betting on newly recruited trees to store carbon in some of the forests disturbed by logging might be a risky gamble, as most of them are pioneer trees highly vulnerable to water stress. Trees that survive logging activities may therefore be more reliable and accumulating carbon in these disturbed forests. Finally, we elaborated predictive maps of potential above-ground carbon stocks changes over 10 years under the hypothesis of a 40% above-ground carbon stocks loss. While our study focuses mainly on carbon recovery after logging, our findings may also give useful clues to predict the forest's responses to carbon loss from fires and other events brought on by climate change, which is ironically caused in part by mass disturbance and deforestation.